Chris. And I'm Angela, and we're coming to you from the greater Chicagoland area. Hi, I'm Lou. And I'm Dee. And we're from Cleveland, Ohio. Join us as we taste a variety of fun wines. On Friday nights. This Friday, we're tasting Chardonnay wines, beginning with Phantom Chardonnay by Bogle Vineyards, then moving on to Kim Crawford's Unoaked Chardonnay from New Zealand, and last but not least, Bread and Butter Chardonnay. Good evening, guys. For tonight's first Chardonnay, we're gonna try Bogle's Phantom Chardonnay by Bogle Vineyards. I love the bottle, it's so, really pretty. <laughs> it's kind of cool. It's a very pretty asked, bottle. But Chris, you asked me what we were doing today. I, I mulched the backyard, so. Hi. It's gonna be really lots, hard lots to differentiate. It's really gonna be really hard to differentiate between the fresh mulch. Oh yes, we have some competing aromas, uh, aromas back here. Uh -oh. <laughs> might, be, <laughs> might be smelling more of that uh, barnyard. Barnyard. <laughs> barnyard. <laughs> What's our other video? Well, it's based on <laughs> yeah, for more about barnyard. <laughs> so, what do we know about Phantom? Uh, that's a good question. So, on the cork, you mentioned the cork D. It says uh, barrel fermented Chardonnay. So typically if you're doing barrel fermentation, you're sitting it on the leaves, which we would expect to see a little more uh, creaminess on the front and, uh, it'll, it'll, it'll and more body. body. Yeah, exactly. Well, the the so. color is very yellow. It is. Very, very yellow. Very, very pretty. Um, so the website, yeah. Chris, it also said that they, uh, they stir it every two weeks. Yeah. All that. So it's barreled in 100% of French oak. It's from the Clarksburg Appalachian. So that's out of uh, uh, Napa. Acids 0.63, pH 3.5. I thought it would have been lower. Is that from their website, Chris? Yeah. 3.5. Yeah, I thought it would have been a little lower. I didn't look at the al alcohol, so we can guess that next. Hey, you, what, you guys getting any aromas off it? I got like a like a vanilla smell. Mm -hmm. We just we just mowed our grass, so I was gonna say it smells like grass, but that might be cheating. <laughs> a little barnyard in there, maybe. A little, a little barnyard. Wood. So I think I smell some uh, green apple. I was gonna say apple or pear. Or... Mm -hmm similar fruit. It's very nice. I haven't even tasted it yet. <laughs> Here it oh, I did. I really like it. <laughs> what I like about the Chardonnay, it's nice and crisp. Um, you know, usually a lot of the California Chardonnays are creamy and oaky, but I think this one's well balanced and it yeah. suits my taste where I like it um, more. Oh, yeah. more. I, I don't typically like the Chardonnay. But I agree with you, Lou. And I was surprised the fact they kept it on the leaves for so long, which is supposed to give it a more creamy taste. The first thing that you get is is a lot of fruit and and a nice little bite right in the, right in the beginning. Yeah, definitely. I really like the Chardonnay. You're getting a little of the, the, the oak on the back end now that it's back into the palate. Yeah, yeah, it's there. Like mm -hmm. I said, it's well balanced. Yeah. Now, did we say what the leaves are? Leaves or leaves? Is le so leaves are... It sounded like leaves. Leaves are basically, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, but basically dead yeast. that just sits in the bottom of the barrel. And you stir, it up, you're you stir it up and basically just breaks down. It comes part of the wine. Oh, gives the wine more body. Gives the, the wine a little more characteristic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and this is what I've seen, Lou. You can tell me this is what, if, if it's what you normally see. So when you first ferment, um, there's, you know, you're pressing off of grape skins. You have a lot of material that's fallen out over the first week or two, and um, after that, you need to remove. If you leave it on that material, you're going to get a lot of off flavors. You after a week or two, you want to you want to get rid of those. You want to uh, rack it to another clean vessel, and that the only thing that should be left, or the most that should be left, is the is the, um, the yeast. So they do all the fermentation, and once they get done fermenting, there's no more food for them, they, they die. They'll sink to the bottom, and if you stir that up over time, it'll give it that 
a little more creamy, a little softer flavor. So, is that, do you typically notice the first week or two? You got yeah. a lot of yeah. yeah, there's a lot of sediment and really just a combination of, like you said, Chris, great bits, seeds, and stems, a little bit of everything. So I would, I would imagine they would rack off most of that material and then over the next week or so of fermentation, however long it lasts, the remaining leaves are stirred in. Do we know anything about malectic fermentation with this one? Or? So that's a good that's a good question. I don't know if it's gone through malolactic fermentation. So just as a reminder, malolactic fermentation is conversion. It's an acid conversion between a harsh malic acid and a softer lactic acid. And which is typical of Chardonnay. Typically it's Chardonnay. Which makes it uh, again creamier. Like like you would think lactic acid is from milk. Milk, yeah. And milk is nice and creamy. Mm-hmm. So the surlies, uh, they say they have this sitting on the surlies for 10 months and they stir it every two weeks. So I didn't realize they kept it on the leaves that, that long. Uh, I think the the trick behind that, Chris, is just make it, make it constantly moving so it doesn't become stagnant on the bottom of the barrel. Right. right. What, um, Angel, which kind of food did you prepare for this today? Today we have two different cheeses, a brie and a Vermont white cheddar. And then we have some uh, mango, almonds, and the green uh, edamame. Thank you, edamame. <laughs> we try to well, coordinate. Angela and I try to coordinate this time. So we, I forgot the almonds. Those. We have almonds. I'd also prepared. I'm sorry. Uh, um, a, it's called a peaches and cream bar. So we'll see. I've never made it before. <laughs> that I could not do. <laughs> <laughs> it takes some peaches. Lunch. Yeah, that'll be good. I think we have. Oh, you also so have shrimp, have... shellfish. Right? Oh, that's right. I'm glad you said that. There is some uh, cocktail shrimp. Yes. That I will not be having all Christmas. <laughs> so we have the mango. Have the mango. We have peaches. Um, one other accompaniment, since I didn't have a chance to bake anything um, for sweetness, <laughs> I saw vanilla pudding. It was a good combo for Chardonnay. Ooh. So um, I made a little bit of vanilla pudding. Is it on the same platter? Yes, it's that, in that other bowl. Um, to Like a dip, I was thinking, for the fruit. Because mm-hmm. the peaches are very, they're you know, like you said, too, they're, they're pretty, they're not ripe. <laughs> you know? no, I, yeah, I should have bought them, like, I, last I, week, but... All right, so for this particular garden, yeah, I'm not enjoying the peaches. Well, and these peaches are like, a, they're not real sweet either. I mean, no, but the, the flavor doesn't work. No? No, I'm gonna try, I'll try the. So I'm gonna show what Angie baked, and, and this is, if, if we keep this going, if she keeps baking like this, <laughs> this is gonna work out well for me. But I'll have to start running, because you know, this is a, uh, switch team in. Mm. It's a peach. It's a peach bar. Is that, it's is called that peaches and cream bar, and they were out of um, the uh, white icing they recommended, so I had to get yellow. It was that or purple. <laughs> Mango's good. The mango is good with this wine. Yeah, is it? I'll have to try it. Yeah, that was really good. Got some edamame, y'all. We sure do. Edamame. Oh, go ahead. We were tell in, the story. <laughs> so we were in Nashville for our honeymoon. We were at this uh, Japanese restaurant, and this uh, southern lady behind us. Asked the waitress, y'all have any uh, edamame? <laughs> it was really, I just love the accent. Yeah, it was really good. Y'all have any edamame? I'm going to say for this wine, mm. I didn't think it brought anything out. The peach? It was, it was, the peach was very tasty, but I'm not sure that it brought anything out. Maybe um, it's just not, yeah, for the peach. That was my impression, Chris, with was that peach. the, the peaches didn't, didn't help the wine. Um, maybe, maybe it'll be with one of the others. Really I, definitely, the I definitely smell the oak. But it's not overly power, overpowering. You, I can smell it, but but it's just not. It, it's not like too much. It's actually really nice. When I was um, looking at the different wines we are going to be sampling tonight, um, it yep. seemed that the Phantom was going to be the nice in between. It's not mm-hmm. the unoaked. And it's not the, you know, super buttery, really oaky either by the description. And that's exactly what I taste. Yep, mm. I agree. Okay. 
it's interesting what would be next what will be what will we what will we pick next so any uh, any final <laughs> thoughts on the um phantom not to drink chardonnay <laughs> this might be one of them <laughs> and if the rest of it tastes this good i may become a convert it's a friday night yeah. fun wine definitely definitely our next wine is the 2017 kim crawford uh, chardonnay from new zealand i'm excited to try this i've never had a new I zealand have I think I've had any down under uh chardonnay this one um compared to the bogle smells more nutty yeah it's definitely got a different smell mm -hmm. different flavor too what aromas are you getting Nutty. Nutty? Yeah. Like so a almond or something? Ooh, almond, maybe nutmeg, something like that. I wonder if the edamame would work with that. Same thing on the on the taste. I'm, I'm tasting the, the nuttiness in the, mm. the flavor. But on the back end, like it's a or cookie it's, or something. I don't know. I, I tasted something sweet like, like a... That, that cookie is really... Um, as soon as you said that, I had an almond with it. And it really intensifies that kind of cookiness of it. Yeah, I, I definitely taste more something like a dessert on the, on the back end. And this is an unoaked Chardonnay, correct? I believe so. Yeah, I, I didn't find the information on it yet. Um, I thought it was, but it was on a list of unoaked Chardonnays, but not. So the first uh, sniff of this, I got a citrus. And then it went into more of like a like an apricot smell. And when I tasted it, the apricot to me came right right away. Not right, away, maybe maybe the second, maybe mid yeah, so <laughs> Now that this has had a chance to work on me for a little bit, Chris, mm -hmm. I am I'm getting the citrus notes. I'll be honest, I, I'm not as much of a fan as of this one. Like the flavor and the aromas are incredible. I typically can't pick those out, but the flavor is not a not one that I'm confused about. I have some taste, Chris, and I, I would I, I would agree that the uh, the bogle was more suited for our, our palate. Yeah. That's a good way but, of putting it, because it's... It... But, having said that, this is still a really good wine. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I, chill it and have it, it, you know, on the on your patio. This, I, I, yeah, with chilled for a, in the hot summer. This is, it's this very is, tasty. This is a really tasty wine. It's not my typical Chardonnay, but if I don't even think about it as a Chardonnay and just as a wine to drink, it's... It's very pleasant. It's very nice. I like it. I'm surprised. I didn't think I was going to like it. I know Chardonnay. Um, I don't know if it's... I got almost that little bubble feel, especially when it was first poured. I don't know if you got that way or like kind of like tiny bubbles. I didn't see any bubbles, but that like almost effervescent this just on my tongue. Um, and then that, and then I noticed it didn't have the creaminess, and it had no. more the, like you said, the citrus and uh, more crisp, <laughs> very crisp. So I've been eating with this the um, peaches and um, vanilla. Is this vanilla pudding. pudding? This is this has been a really good combination with this wine. Huh. Um, I, I agree. Mm -hmm. Citrus and the and the peaches really are are, are enhancing the flavors, flavors of the wine. I had it with the um, peaches and cream bar. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Ooh. It was really good with this. Yeah. I think yeah. The if citrus. you haven't tried that, Chris, give that a try. Interesting. Kind of going through all our stuff real quick. I think of what, what we're tasting. I think of it as more of a traditional Chardonnay, and not not in the flavors, not necessarily the oak and the butter, but uh, the flavors that are typically with the Chardonnay. And again, it's not quite my palate, but I'm impressed with the aroma and the fact that I can pick out the stone fruit in it. Because uh, I, I don't know if I've ever been able to do that before. It's pretty. The flavors are definitely um, very evident. Edamame, uh, I tried it with that. It was nice because the edamame was a little salty. It kind of balanced the the acid and the and the fruit. Um, but edam edamame is really difficult to eat. You know, you always have the the leftovers in there, so it's a bit of a challenge. And I gotta try. I gotta try your dessert, babe. Okay, Chris, you were right. The edamame with the Kim Crawford wine is hmm. really good. Somebody could shuck it for me. I think it'd be excellent. But with all the extras in there, it makes it hard. I did opt for the 
non-shelled because it was a they had the sea salt with it, whereas the already shelled they didn't. And I thought the salt would. Help. You just stick it in your mouth. Well, no. And I use your teeth to kind of. Yeah. She said it. Stick it in your mouth. No teeth. <laughs> Don't use your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. Um, this pair is really nice. This one, again, very, very different from the Bogle. It yeah. pairs very nice with the um, the peach, and it, it kind of complements. Really like it so. with the peach. I really like that edamame combo with the with Kim this? Crawford. Yes, yeah, yeah. definitely. I, had a I, would, I wouldn't have thought that. You know, like I wouldn't have. That wouldn't have been my first pick. Yeah. Like I no, thought. All right, you're well, absolutely right, Chris. Yeah, really I wouldn't good. have thought that either. Prochet. From Friday Night Fun Wines. Edamame. Edamame. Edamame, y'all. 